It is Friday pour day. Uh, we are ready to pour this thing. I'm a little bit nervous based on the last couple pours I've done, but I uh, one thing that I want to reiterate with uh, with sign making and this particular thing especially is preparation is everything. Really, I spent probably two hours just preparing this, getting ready for it to pour. And let me go through a couple things of what I've done. First of all, um, for as far as stirring, we picked these up. Did we get these at? We got these at Walmart. They're the bigger version of the popsicle sticks. But the one thing that I realized too is see how these are round on the end. Um, I, I want to be able to make sure that the, with the mixing that I can get to the bottom. So I just cut, uh, I just took a bunch of them and I cut the tip off. So they're nice and square so I can get right down into the bottom. That was uh, first thing. Second thing is I wanted to make sure that this thing is level. So I, um, I actually used, uh, if you can come down here, I used my little level and I, I put it in four different positions around the board and it's pretty close all the way around. Now, how did I level it? Rather than leveling the bench from the bottom up, which is the way I had done it in the past, I just made some, um, some quarter inch and eighth inch little um, scrap pads and then my, uh, my standoffs under, underneath here, which I'm using those little red cups, uh, I just, you know, put these under there, whatever I needed to bring the level up on all four corners, all four sides. So then, um, so that was the other preparation thing that I did. Then I've already got these poured. Now what, what you saw in the last pour, I had heard that um, putting this stuff by weight was the best way to do it. But after doing more um, research on it, I found that um, they say that it's better to do by volume, and that's what the instructions on this EnviroTech says as well, is to, uh, to do it by volume. So uh, based on that, I went and got these little um, deals from Sherwin-Williams, these little uh, deals that have uh, the graduated uh, volume marks on them, so I am uh, have the exact amount of both the resin and the hardener because um, it's a one-to-one -one mix with this stuff, and they're both just under 16 inches. So that tells me that my volume is, is correct. Now, what I'll do is, and you guys have seen me do this in the past, I'm going to take both these, put it in the bucket, mix them up, and then um, and stir them. And then what I'll do from there is um, mix them for two minutes at that point, and then I will... Uh, and so I need to make sure and get all that stuff out of there. And again, that's uh, that really helps to have the little square end on the on my little craft sticks. I could have already done this off camera, but I wanted you guys to see. Um, and I probably won't keep these. They're just I think they were a buck a piece or something like that. They're really inexpensive. But they're made for doing exactly what I'm doing with them. So now I know I've got pretty much everything out of that uh, out of that container. Pretty much. All right. The other thing is glove up. You definitely don't want to get this stuff on your skin. Yeah, I don't think it's toxic, but it ain't uh, it ain't fun. I can tell you that from personal experience. So I am now. So I've got just under what? What's so funny? The heavy sigh. <laughs> well, I'm nervous. <laughs> I thought I had this stuff down until that last pour went kind of goofy on me. Oh, the other thing, preparation. It is about uh, 75 to 80 degrees inside this inside of our studio because I've had the heater going in here all night long. So it's it's early in the morning right now. But um, so that was another thing that I think was uh, uh, an issue with our last pour. Well, not the last one, but the one before last when we were filling those knots. And there's no rain outside. So I think the the moisture content in the air is the humidity is is down. So I think we're okay there. All right, I guess I guess I pretty much scraped. I feel like a kid licking the plate at, at dinner. 
Vicky gets on me about that all the time. <laughs> anyway, so we are now going to mix for two minutes straight, and we won't keep that. We won't keep you guys waiting on that. And then we're going to put it into another container, as the directions say. And then we're going to uh, um, mix it again. So we'll be back in just a sec. Okay, so this is the second mix. I've already mixed it for two minutes in that other one. And now I've been mixing for a little over two minutes in this one. So we have two of these. These are what we bought. Uh, our mints that we we're putting in packages came at uh, in Christmas time, and uh, that worked out pretty well. These little things are handy to have. By the way, I had to really wash these things out. So if you whatever containers you use, make sure you give it a good wash. One more. Half and half. Clear. All right, we're gonna do this from the center out. From what the directions say, this should be enough. Am I doing it right? No, I was going to go, oh. yeah. From what the directions say, this should be enough to do like twice the square footage of what I've got here. But most people that do the pours on this, honestly, are doing just flat surfaces, not carved the way I am. So, you know, I take that into account as well. And it seems like every time that I pour this stuff, I end up coming up short, but man, I hope not this time. So what were you saying, babe? Oh, you Over here. Go around the edges, yeah. Looking pretty good so far. So as you've seen me do in the past, I'm going to probably, after we get this all spread out, is probably check it every 15 minutes or so. Actually, I like using that stick a little bit better. And we want it to uh, definitely go over the edges. All right. Help you start mixing that stuff. Around.
Okay, guys, let's see if the heat gun will uh, will get rid of some of these bubbles. There we go. Yeah, there's one over here too. Right there. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Okay. Looks like it might have come off one of those sticks. I also see uh, that needs to be filled in. Yeah. But it looks like we're. We're getting close to bubble three. Other than those holes. So what we're gonna do guys, I'm gonna work on this a little bit more. Well, I'm gonna come back out in about, give it another 15 minutes and come back out. See if any other bubbles have uh, reared their ugly head. get it too hot. So I have to do it in sections. Oh, it's really coming up there, yeah, huh? Hey guys, all right, we are back. So the last scene that you guys saw, we were just messing with the, the bubbles a little bit. We came back out two or three times and uh, so this thing is now all set up. Now you're going to find out why I drilled those holes. So uh, I'm going to set this thing up. You guys are going to see the finished product. Then we're going to go into some, some challenges that we had with it. That is it. Tip it so we can see the side a little bit. Oh, the side? The end. The, the edge. edge. Oh, yeah. This is what the faux edge looks like. I'm actually going to turn it around too. I want them to see from the back side. You can you're going to be able to see what I did was those holes. They have those LED lights in them. So I countersunk. I used my router, countersunk this in, cut a cavity for the box, and then there's a cavity here. And then I actually routed a line all the way around, and those lights are in there. So let's show you what it looks like with the. Okay, you those. stay right there. I'll get the lights. Okay. That's what it looks like. So, that is the finished product, boys and girls. I still, actually, there's one more step that I've wait. got. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure which. It's got eight different modes. Let's try two. There we go. Oh, Just there so we go. You can see them a little better. Can you see them better that way? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the third mode. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's different. Four, five. Anyway, so um, I still have to put a finish on the backside. I'm just going to use some uh, 
spar urethane on the back. So we'll turn this off for now. And I want to talk about some issues that I had with this thing that I think um, that I learned. Even though I'm really, really happy with its way this came out, when I do another one, I'm gonna, I learned a lot on this. So let me show you uh, <laughs> what I, several different things that uh, I will do different. Number one, the, um, the epoxy resin on the edge, it kind of soaked in some places that we didn't anticipate that it would. Um, and that just has to do with the grain of the board. I think I will, if I do this again before I epoxy it, I will, I will put a, um, like a coat of clear on it to try and seal up the board. That will help with bubbles. Um, after reading the instructions and watching a lot of YouTube videos, I'm going to seal it up either with spar urethane or something that will um, seal up that board and keep those bubbles from coming out of the wood. And I think uh, redwood is especially porous where some woods might not have that issue. And that uh, was an issue on the edge as well. Um, the other thing is when I cut that cavity in the back, um, in order to keep the epoxy from coming all the way through, what I did was I actually put masking tape in that groove. I took little pieces of tape and I stuck in the holes and then I put masking tape, the blue painter's tape, and uh, that was not a good idea. It was uh, a bad idea. So I would do that different. What happened was that painter's tape uh, adhered and glued to the resin and then I had literally had to drill it out. Each one of the holes I had to drill out several times. Um, and even before then, I had to take the router and, uh, and actually reroute that line so then the painter's tape was just in the, there. was just in the holes. So I had to reroute that line, clear that line out with a router, and uh, then drill those tapes. And so this is what it looks like when I was drilling those, uh, drilling that tape and combination tape and resin out. So then uh, after I got that done, then I had to basically take and put those, light, those lights in and use hot glue. And um, I had a buddy of mine help me with it, but we finally got it. But it was several hours of work just uh, setting those lights in there. So there, and, and again, I, I would do the epoxy a little bit different. I'm learning a little bit more every time I do it. Uh, but I'm very happy with the way it came out. It's not perfect like I wanted it to be, but I certainly am very happy with the way it came out. And I hope, uh, John, I hope you like it. Uh, I'll be shipping this thing out of here within the next few days, probably first of the week. And uh, we'll move on to the next project. So uh, Monday, I think we got uh, a big sign carvers of the day and maybe something a little bit special along with that. Um, let me know what you guys think of this. If you have any suggestions, any feedback, I'd love to hear it. And um, again, thanks for watching. This is uh, video number seven out of seven. And I'm glad it's done. I hope, uh, I hope John gets a kick out of it and finds a nice place in the shop for it. Um, thanks again for watching. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, we'd love for you to subscribe. Give us a like, a thumbs up if you would. We'd appreciate it. Share it as much as you can. We appreciate all the support, guys. And if you have any questions, email me directly, eric at makerwoodsign.com. And uh, I guess that's about it. Is that about it, babe? That's about it. That's about it. Have a great weekend, everybody. Hope you guys liked it. Let me know. We'll see you on Monday. Bye.